Full factorial DOE is used to analyze the effects of multiple factors, each at two levels, on a numerical response. These designs are best used when you have few factors, since they can get quite large and cost prohibitive. In this session, we will create and analyze a full factorial DOE in engine room to reduce wait times at a customer service center and evaluate three factors. Number of cues with levels one and two, type of headset with levels mono aural and bi aural, and the availability of an extra specialist with levels no and yes. We will create the design from scratch, then enter the response data to analyze it. Go to Analyze, Design of Experiments, and select DOE. The tool opens in the workspace. Select Start a Design. We have three factors, so click the Add Factor button to get three rows. Then fill in the factor information provided. Once all the factor information is entered, click Continue. Now we have to select the desired design. For three factors, we have two options, a resolution three alias design and a full resolution design. Select the full resolution design shown in green. Next, we want to make sure we have enough power to detect the effect size of interest. We will use the default effect size of two standard deviations and the default significance level of 5%. There are no center points in this design. The experiment will be run at two different locations, or centers, so select two replicates of the design. Additionally, selecting two blocks will treat the replicates as blocks and account for any differences between the replicates. The total blocks toggle button means we have a total of two blocks. If we switch this to scale blocks, the blocks will be scaled to the number of replicates so that our design will have two blocks per replicate. We will leave the total blocks setting on. Our design has 92% power to detect the chosen effect size. A design with 80% power or above is considered a powerful design, so we're good to go. On the right, you see a summary of the design that will be created. Click Create Design. The design matrix opens up from the Data Sources panel. It contains all the information about the design, with a blank column at the end. Normally, you would run the experiment by following the randomized run order and enter the response data into this blank column. However, since the response data are already provided in standard order, we will order our design in standard order so that we match the data provided. Then we can simply copy and paste the response data into the blank column and click the Save and Close button. Note, at this point, if you need to change the design, you can click on the navigation nodes across the top or use the back button. This will not be an option once you've started the analysis. To analyze the data, click on the data source and drag the design matrix variable from the data sources panel onto the design matrix drop zone and the wait time variable onto the response variable drop zone. Click continue. This screen gives you options for fitting a model to the data which you can adjust to your needs. The default model reduction method is backward elimination, which starts with all terms in the model and removes one term at each step whose p-value is larger than the chosen alpha to remove until the only terms remaining have p-values less than the alpha to remove. This is the final model. Other options include forward selection, stepwise, manual, and no reduction. By default, the alpha to remove value matches the desired significance level that was used to calculate the power of your design. The show only factors in model option, when switched on, shows factorial plots only for those effects that are included in the model. Let's use the default settings for reducing the model and click continue. The output is displayed. The conclusion statement at the top gives a summary of the results. Here it states that the main effects of cues, headset, and specialist, and the AC or cues by specialist interaction are all significant at the 5% level. The output screen has three tabs. The model output tab shows the final model equations encoded and, if applicable, in uncoded units. The model statistics table shows the standard error of the model and the R squared and R squared adjusted are both over 90%. So we can conclude the model explains over 90% of the variability in the response.
The ANOVA table shows the significant model terms along with their F-test statistics and p-values. Note that the blocks are significant, indicating the two call centers are somehow different, which should be investigated. The effect coefficients table shows the effect sizes along with the coded regression coefficients and the confidence intervals corresponding to the chosen confidence level, which is 1 minus the chosen significance level. On the right, the Pareto effect plot shows the significant effects with their effect sizes next to the bars. So we see that the main effects of cues, headset, and specialist, and the AC, or cues by specialist interaction, are all significant at the 5% level. The tabs at the bottom show additional graphs. The half normal effects plot shows the same result as the Pareto. The residual plots help validate the model assumptions. The normal probability plot shows points falling reasonably close to the diagonal line in the plot, indicating the residuals are fairly normally distributed. The residuals versus fits plot shows residuals randomly scattered about the horizontal line at zero on the y-axis, validating the assumption that the residuals are randomly distributed and have constant variance. The histogram of residuals is also used to validate normality of the residuals, but because its appearance depends on the number of intervals used to group the data, it is not the best plot to assess normality and the normal probability plot is preferred. The residuals versus time order plot shows points falling randomly around the center line with no obvious trends or patterns present, so the assumption that the residuals are independent of each other holds. Now we can start drawing conclusions about the effects, Click the Factorial Plots tab. The three main effect plots are shown. The headset main effect is not involved in an interaction, so we can interpret it. This plot shows that wait time is minimized for the bi-aural headset. Since cues and specialists are involved in a significant interaction, we must ignore their main effects and interpret their combined effect and optimal levels from the interaction plot. Click on the interaction plot link to see the AC interaction plot. Here, we see that wait time is minimized when there is one queue. At this level, the difference between having or not having an extra specialist is negligible. Finally, let's examine the queue plot. Click on the queue plot link. The shortest wait time mean of 7.5 corresponds to the settings of one queue, by aural headsets, and no specialist. This combination will result in minimized wait times and improved customer satisfaction. The Design Summary tab holds the information about the experimental design that was created. You can edit the model further or change any of your previously selected model selection settings by clicking on the Edit Model or Edit Options buttons at the top right of the study. Note that if the experiment design and data were created and are available from the Data Sources panel, you can simply drag on the variables to the DOE tool to analyze the design. This ends the tutorial on full factorial design of experiments using Engine Room. Thanks for watching.